Okay, let's go. Um, I want to actually talk about this because this is really interesting to me. Really interesting. This is something, um, yeah, it's, it's a sad story, by the way. So people, please be careful of watching this. Um, he's not going into too much detail. If you look into it, I believe it's even worse. Uh, I'm not going to look at it like that, though. I just wanted to talk about some things that um, I I feel on this issue. Um, let's go. I, ju I just read the most disturbing story maybe that I have ever read. Most disturbing news story. Now, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to go too into detail at all because this is just horrifying. It's by Mia Cathel on Town Hall. I hope I'm not mispronouncing Mia's last name. Headline tapes. We investigated a suburban LGBT pedophile ring. Here's what we found. And it's a story of these two guys, these two gay guys who are in a gay marriage, and they adopted children, two male children. They adopted the children from a nominally Christian adoption agency, obviously a Christian adoption agency that endorses same-sex marriage adoption. I, it would be hard for me to understand how that's a Christian adoption agency, but they do it. And then the guys just constantly raped the children, uh, just very young children. W now that the, the guys have been caught, the children are ages nine and 11. They bragged about raping the children. They made you know, all sorts of videos and things. They invited their friends to do it. That's, uh, if you wanna read the grisly details, it's over at Town Hall, you can give it a read. Not for the faint of heart, so I don't necessarily recommend you do it. Obviously, these men, if they are guilty of what, what they are accused of doing, obviously they... First off, this is what I have heard. In situations like this I've heard in the past um, where people um, talk about adoptions with men and how that works, I I have always felt like two things. One, when we talk about gay couples and gay married couples, we don't know who is what. We don't know who's actually gay and who's actually just saying they're gay. You get what I'm saying? Men are still men, right? We can't decipher who's a regular man and who's a pedophilic man. We just don't know that. We don't know who is actually pedophilic and who is not. Now, we take a chance with men when it comes to, you know, a married couple, a man, a woman, um, and a married couple um, adopting a child. We take a chance because we have a chance with that uh, one man. He could be a pedophile, right? Now, to me, I always feel like with single men, it's more problematic. And, of course, it's worse to me with gay couples. The reason why I feel it's worse with gay couples is because now you have two men. Now you have two men you have to figure out, make sure, and hope that neither of them are pedophiles. We all know, among men, they're more likely to be pedophiles. So why... What we say two, why would we take a chance on having two men? You know what I mean? And also, the other side of this is this. You don't know if they're really gay or if they're just getting married so then they can seem like a couple, which would seem a little bit more... Um, like they're trying to start a family people understand gay people who try to start a family right so you might not look at them as badly as a single man doing it so forth and i feel like how are you supposed to know if that is a gay man and another gay man marrying or two pedophilic men who marry in the goal to have children to rape what if they don't even have any interests in each other that way you don't know if they even have sex and you don't know that they are actually interested in each other they could have just had a marriage and said that they've been in a relationship who's who's checking 
Like, who's checking this? Nobody's checking, and nobody should be checking for that matter. You know what I mean? Um, it, that's their personal business. But it, when it obviously is including children, obviously, they're trying to commit a crime by um, that. To me, is uh, that's what I'm saying. You could easily get pedophiles who will do this in order to get access to children in a better way because now it people are looking at them as a gay couple instead of just a single man to me i don't think men should be able to be adopting and a story if it's without a female i honestly think it's a risk when it's with a female obviously because a married man can be a pedophile too you know, but at least it's just one chance, you know what I mean, instead of two of them, and to me, it's also, the other thing is, is that usually, if you think of it, with pedophiles, they do have a tendency to go towards women with children than women without children, that is just a thing, you know, a woman who can't have children is less, um, favorable to them obviously because their chance of having children to rape you know is less accessible for them so I mean there's a lot of different aspects to this and this is why for me I just kind of am like well you want to minimize your chances of placing a child with a pedophile obviously men are more likely to be pedophiles so since men are more likely to be pedophiles you don't want to be adopting children out to people who are just male you know it's only men who are adopting this child if it's just one man if it's two men you know it doesn't matter if it's just men I don't I don't like that one you know and then like a married couple like I said we take the chance but there's more benefit in it because technically you know the majority of men are heterosexual and majority of men aren't attracted to children so I mean there is more benefit like it's more not benefit but more of a chance that it's not going to happen in that case because it's less you get what I'm saying um so to me I mean like that's a major thing to me I never think that gay people should be adopting I think they should have the right to marry yes but I do not think they should have the right to adopt I'm saying gay men specifically Gay men, single men, it's specific on the sex. Like, I don't have any issue with lesbians, for that matter. I do think that when women adopt children, whether they're single or whether they're lesbian, for that matter, I don't really care, um, it's more of a different problem. Like, how do you raise a son without his father? You know what I mean? Who's going to be his role model, you know? I kind of feel like if you have a boy, you should have a male role model for that child. You know what I mean? So uh, to me, you know, that's a part of how I feel on this issue. It's just like it should be more sex based than about like gay people or, you know, gay not having gay people, you know, adopt or whatever. I don't think it's a basis of homosexuality. I think it's more a basis of men. And, you know, you shouldn't let men be able to adopt alone. That that just doesn't seem safe to me. Um, what? Oh. I want to continue a bit more of what he has to say here, actually. They should, be, they should be executed. There's no question about that as far as I'm concerned. Even if you are a little worried about the death penalty and even if you have objections to the death penalty which i do not i think the death penalty is perfectly just and legitimate and christian and acceptable but even if you do uh one i i think irrefutable uh, argument for the death penalty beyond mere retribution which i think is ultimately the point of all criminal justice but but beyond that you could you you would have to say that for the purposes of protecting the public from the further predations of these animals, these absolute criminals, uh, the death penalty would be justified. At the very least, to protect people, if not purely for the purpose of justice and retribution, at least to protect people. And you know, with the way that our justice system works now, if these pedos go to... My thing is with the death penalty is, 
I just heard about a, a situation. Some dude died like a couple days ago. Do you know I was like, I think I was like a couple months old or uh, I wasn't even a year old when he was killing people. Like the death penalty is so fucked up that they have it where somebody killed somebody almost 30 years ago, like 28 years ago, and he just went to bed a couple days ago. Like, I was so pissed off that he they, they just had him around so long. Like, we shouldn't keep our death row inmates around longer than five years. I think give them three years. Give them three years the most, you know. Um, sometimes I tend to think of that one situation where this dude... Um, which I had no sympathy for because he was trying to kill his baby. But um, outside of that, we weren't, like, for justice. Nobody was trying to get justice off that. It was justice off his fucked up wife. But um, there's this case in Britain where this dude had his wife killed um, by a neighbor. It wasn't, he didn't have it done, but his wife got killed by a neighbor. And then they put him to sleep. And then, like, I think it was three years later, they finally figured out that his neighbor killed his wife and he was already put to sleep. So they just put the um, neighbor to sleep afterwards. But by that time, the neighbor's wife was already um, killed by the neighbor. Um, so and to me, you know, like from my perspective on that whole situation, like I have always thought and you give it three years for that. Even though, like I said, I didn't even have any sympathy for anyone involved because, you know, I'm pro-life and it was involving abortion, so I didn't give a fuck. But I was just saying, as far as, you know, the legal system and everything and how things can go wrong in those situations, I just feel like you should give them three years and put them asleep, basically. Um, and don't be dumb. Like, don't be stupid. Like, you know, don't, like, have things where you're putting, like, people to sleep where they don't have DNA evidence and you're basically putting them to sleep when you're looking for a victim, I mean, a perpetrator who's like black or something, you know, like get your facts straight, basically. That's another case I came up with. But yeah, to me, I'm like, we need to fix the death penalty situation. We have way too many people on death row. They need to be going to sleep fast. We don't need to be paying for them to stay in prison. Do you know how much it costs yearly to house death death row inmates? Like to me, this is why I I do believe in the death penalty, and I, I agree with him. Well, I do believe in the death penalty. I think we need to use more of the death penalty. We need to use lots of death penalty to cut down on the prison inmates in prison because we spend way too much fucking money on those idiots. I don't understand. We pay for everything for them. I, I know we pay their internet. We pay their cable TV. We pay their food. We pay their rent everything you know and they broke laws they killed somebody many of the time they did something really heinous to somebody like in this case you know and it's like uh, in my opinion it's like why are people like trying to keep these people you know alive in prison and pay for all their expenses while well, we got people out and outside of prison who are following the law and are having a troubled time trying to pay the rent Troubled time trying to feed themselves. Don't have cable TV. Don't have internet. Living like it's 19, 1910 in some cases because you don't even have a TV in some people's at homes. And you're trying to say that these people live worse off than the people who kill somebody, bash somebody in the head, or rape some kids. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's like it's such a ass backwards situation. Really, it seriously is a fucking ass backwards situation where you would think like how are you saying that you are trying to house these people who have done all these shitty fucked up things and make them live a better life than the poor you know to me it's just upsetting and i mean like they don't deserve to have a better life than the poor they deserve to be six feet under you know, that's a good punishment. If someone was poor starting off and then they get their expenses paid for for the rest of their life, how do you think they feel? Of course, they feel like they got it better now. Like, to me, that's just how I see it. It's like, it's so stupid how we have prisons. We pay for all their expenses, make life fucking easy for them, and 
it was all supposed to be a fucking punishment. Yet, following the law was actually more of a more of a situation where <clears throat> you are actually punished for following the law, basically, because you end up poor, you end up struggling, and those people out there, they got all their expenses paid for. So that's all I have to say on that. Continue, though, dude. Prison, I do agree. Well, if there were justice in the prison system, they would not last very long in prison. Uh, but if they, did, if they did make it, you know they'd be let out. You know they'd be let out. We don't we don't keep criminals in jail in this country. Not these days. So they probably would be let out, and what would they do? They'd do it again. So, sure, we. I think most... most. Yeah, and that's the thing. For everybody who, outside of, I, I guess, theft, you could think differently, but everybody else, like rapists, you know, drug dealers, drug addicts, all those motherfuckers, like, I don't understand it. Like, it's like, do you think they don't know they're not supposed to be on the drugs, sell the drugs? You know, you uh, do you really mean to tell me that people don't know that they're not supposed to rape people, regardless who it is, children, women? You know, do you think they don't know they're not supposed to do those things? Everybody fucking knows they're not supposed to do anything. I, I don't understand. What is prison going to teach anybody? Prison isn't going to teach anyone jack shit. That's the thing. Like, people have to realize, what are you doing? Why are you putting someone in fucking prison? You have to understand, it, it has to be for a reason, right? Are they going to learn their lesson? They're going to learn their lesson not to rape people. They're going to learn their lesson not to sell drugs. They're going to learn their lesson not to kill 10 people next time. You really mean to tell me that? Like, to me, I don't get that. People always talk about prison as if, it's going to do anything. Prison doesn't do jack shit of anything if you don't keep them in there. And like I said, we shouldn't be keeping them in there because they cost so much fucking money and they don't, they're not worth it. They don't deserve the money. What have they fucking done to deserve being taken care of? They've done fucking nothing but everything to explain why they don't deserve to live in our society and deserve to be put the fuck down. Reasonable people agree these two men should be executed very swiftly for what they did. But when will we address the broader issues? Are we going to address the broader issue? Are we willing to end the absurd and barbaric practice of same-sex and single-parent adoption? And certainly when it comes to single-parent adoption, certainly single-male parent adoption, I think single-parent adoption generally should be discouraged, if not just made illegal outright. Certainly same-sex adoption should be illegal. A child has a right to his natural mother and father to, to, to be conceived within the context of a marriage and in the conjugal act of his parents. Well, I do not think that the child has to be raised by uh, in that sense because I do think that if we're playing house at this point, this is stupid as fuck, in my opinion. reason why it's stupid as fuck to me is because it's like, that's not his mom and that's not his dad. It's adoption. So, I mean, uh, either way, it's not their parents. I don't give a fuck about that. But I do agree with the whole thing of male adoptions. Yeah, definitely. Men should not be single adopting any fucking child, okay? They shouldn't be, okay? It shouldn't be adopting anyone. No fucking children should be adopted by a man alone. And alone means if he's a gay man or if he's a single man, I don't give a fuck. That's how I feel. It doesn't really matter if he's with another man or if he's alone. He's still a man without a woman. And that, to me, is not, I'm not comfortable with that. Because now, if you are talking about gay men, it's even worse. Because now it's like, and now we got two men to worry about. Instead of just one. Now we got two fucking men to deal with. So, uh, to me, that's why, for me, I just personally think that, you know, I definitely do not think that adoption, same-sex adoption for men should ever occur. Or, uh you know, single men adopting, like men should not be able to adopt unless they have a wife. That's the end of the situation. In my opinion, I do think that gay men should have a right to their children. 
uh, biological children, just like si- it's single men should, uh, obviously. Divorced men obviously should have a right to their children. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm saying adoption should never fucking be involving just men adopting children. They have to have a fucking wife. That's just what it has to be, in my opinion. Uh, we know that there are something like 36 couples trying to adopt every newborn baby put up for adoption in the United States. There's no shortage of mommies and daddies married to one another who want to adopt babies. Okay, there's no shortage of that at all. And yet, because of wokeness and political correctness, we've got to say, no, well, there, we shouldn't discriminate against gay men or single parents who want to adopt. But of course we should, because it's not about the adults. Whether they want to satisfy the most horrific lusts they could have or whether they just want a kid and they didn't get married and they just want to have a kid, we, we know that it is better for a child to be raised in a marriage, in a real marriage with a mother and a father. And so at the very least for newborn babies where the situation is really, really straightforward, we should prioritize the children over the parents. No question about that. We're not allowed to say that. That's not politically correct. We're not allowed to point out that... Child sex abuse is much more prevalent among LGBT-identified people. I'm not saying all gay guys are child abusers. Obviously, that is not the case. The vast majority of gay guys are not child abusers. But the numbers are the numbers. The LGBT identification in the United States is 7.1%. That's according to Gallup. According to the Williams Institute at UCLA Law, so not some far-right think tank, according to a very liberal, storied institution, 20% of registered sex offenders identify as LGBT. We're not allowed to say that. We're not allowed to confront that fact. Uh, Yeah, I would say with that whole situation, though, that's not specifically gay men. Um, You can kind of tell with it's um, with some parts of the LGBT community, there is a connection. Um, For example, there's one. famous person who is a female, not a male, but a female, who specifically were talking about their attraction. And they said specifically that they weren't attracted to animals. Like, that was the only thing they were not attracted to. They said in their own way that they're basically attracted to children as well. Um, But they specifically said the only thing they weren't attracted to were animals. You can see with certain parts of the LGBT community, they're like that sometimes. Not specifically, I don't think it's gay people that's that way, though. I think it's actually, um, like, more so the people who kind of, like, align with the whole idea of pansexual, sometimes they seem like they can have those tendencies because they don't have a distinction or discrimination of who they're attracted to. Therefore, they they're basically admitting that they can be attracted to children um, or have the propensity more so to do such a thing. Um, So I'm like, I don't think it's specifically gay men. I would think it would actually be a different type, a different type of male individual. Um, And you can see this with many um, different studies too. Like you can say like different things, other um issues in the lgbt community um sometimes certain mental illnesses or um certain self-destructive behavior occurs in the lgbt community but it's not specifically gay or lesbian people who are actually more likely to do that um like what i just mentioned just a second ago um that would not be LGBT, I mean, lesbian or gay people, like suicide rates and um, mental illness uh, and certain other, um, like mental illnesses like depression, I believe, um, are, it's not as common among gay men as it is, for example, among um, another type of male, basically, if you get what I'm saying. Um, I don't like to accuse or point out those things. I mean, I looked up a study and I know that that's the case. But what I'm pointing out here is that um, that just because a majority, like a good portion, not a majority, but a good portion of the L- of the um, 
sex offenders identified as LGBT or whatever does not mean that it, they were specifically gay. It would be more likely probably that there's something else, if you get what I'm talking about, um, than specifically gay men. Just pointing out. Um so, I mean, like, I know some people like to lump them all together, but there is a distinction, and I think it needs to be distinguished because of the way the brain works. Like, if you are attracted to men, per se, that's very, very different than specifically other types of sexuality. So you can't, like, la- label everything together just because they're all in the same LGBT category. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. Anyway, my point uh, in this whole video, I definitely agree with this guy on mainly the whole issue of um, um, gay men not adopting. I don't think gay couples should be adopting children. I think if they want to have children, they should do it the natural route, maybe. I mean, it's their choice at that point, in my opinion, because, uh, I mean, it's their sperm, and if they want to try and make a baby with that go ahead that's your choice but I don't think anyone should be uh like placing children with a gay couple um and I don't think it should be with single men either and I do believe that like the death penalty should be um enacted more often I really like this video all in all and I just came across his channel so I subscribed I don't even really know much about his channel I've heard of his name before um, and yeah, it seems like a, he, um, from this video seems like a really good video. So I'm going to continue to watch a couple of his videos and so forth, but this story just popped out to me because it was just interesting in the sense where, um, people never talk about this really yet that I've heard. I've heard people talk a bit more about like adoption when it comes to gay, lesbian couples and things like that. But, like, from this angle of gay couples specifically, this is specifically how I've always felt. I always feel like I never really fit with anyone on this because I don't have an issue with lesbians adopting, really. Like, I don't. But gay men, to me, I I do have an issue with that. I have an issue with any man without a woman adopting. That's just my view on it. It's a sex-based situation. Honestly, I thought, anyway, men didn't really have much of a... Uh, paternal instinct supposedly people say so why do they even need to adopt children just being completely honest so that's all i have to say thanks for watching like and subscribe comment down below and have a great day bye guys